Apple has unveiled two new next generation chips, the M2 Pro and the M2 Max. It's touting the Max as the world's most powerful and power efficient chip for a pro laptop. Yahoo Finance's Dan Howley has more details on this. Dan, talk to us about these chips. That's right, this is kind of uh, more of what we're seeing from Apple where they're trying to bring more and more of their capabilities in-house as far as production goes, uh, design rather. Uh, and this is uh, just another example of that where seeing the M2 Max and the M2 Pro, those are the latest pieces of Apple Silicon. They say, as you said, that they offer the best battery life in a Mac. They, they claim that it's up to 22 hours, which is absolutely wild for a laptop. Uh, they also say that, and this is uh, important for people who are doing things like uh, you know, heavy app use uh, as far as designing apps or uh, video uh, editing, that when you unplug it, it doesn't downgrade the power. So you'll see that in some other uh, Intel-based systems where it'll start to almost reel back in its capabilities because it doesn't want to drain the battery too much. This, they say, you won't see that uh, in, in the new Mac. So this is really impressive. Uh, we have the, the uh, MacBook Pro as well as the Mac Mini. Uh, the MacBook Pro gets both the M2 Pro and the M2 Max chips. The Mac Mini gets the M2 and the M2 Pro. Uh, and uh, again, this is just more signs of Apple really kind of developing its capabilities as far as designing chips and then pushing that even further. So you'll remember that they had uh, initially said that the M1, uh, M1 Pro and M1, M1 Max uh, were really you know, the, the top of the top of what Apple had to offer. Now they're pushing that even further. Interestingly, the M2 Max and that, that statement of it being one of the, the most powerful chips on the market uh, comes after Intel revealed what it said uh, is the world's fastest mobile chip. So we're seeing this kind of war of uh, words between the two companies as far as their capabilities in silicon goes. Dan, while we've got you on all things tech, Microsoft is meanwhile in talks to increase its stake in open AI. What can you tell us about the significance of this in the two companies? Yeah, so they already offer uh, open AI capabilities as part of its Azure platform, but it was uh, more of on a test case basis. Now there's general availability, which means companies in general can apply to have open AI's capabilities built into their Azure platforms that they're subscribing to. So uh, this is a big deal. It shows that Microsoft recognizes uh, that OpenAI is a big investment for them. Uh, they want to put $10 billion in it. They originally put $1 billion in, uh, and now uh, they're kind of pushing that further. And it, it comes at a good time, right? It's also top of mind because everyone's talking about uh, ChatGPT. Uh, that's something that has really gotten people's attention with its ability to almost write uh, in a human style. Uh, there's clearly been talk about how this could improve Microsoft's position in search through Bing, uh, if they make that really the, the kind of uh, experience that you get rather than just uh, a number of links that you get with Google that could push them pretty far beyond though you know I, I kind of want to caution that there's you know Google is Google uh, and it will be hard to dethrone it uh, and they're also working on their own capabilities but seeing this kind of going out to the the broader uh, business public uh, is really a big deal as far as Microsoft goes, really gives them uh, an edge here and using kind of the the huge amount of uh, discussion that we've had about ChatGPT in recent days is important. They also go out of their way to say that they try to make this uh, as responsible as possible as far as AI goes. So uh, partners that want to use it uh, or, or customers that want to use it rather, they need to actually apply and provide the use case that they're going to be using uh, if they get access to it. Hey, Dan, since you mentioned Google, we're going to go for the hat trick here in some of the mega cap tech companies. Google, we knew they were set to shut down their Stadia cloud offering, but how did they botch this video game experiment? Yeah, this is something that, you know, they seem to jump into. They, they had this, you know, these high flying ideas of integrating YouTube and, you know, people being able to jump in and jump out of games if they wanted to. And, you know, the reality is that it never really came to fruition. They had previously opened up uh, game studios. They shuttered those. They hired some big name people uh, and they just didn't make that that long term commitment, it seems. Uh, as far as Stadia goes, it never seemingly got off the ground. We didn't have uh, numbers from Google because they, they keep that pretty close to the chest with things like that. Uh, but it seems as though it's just one of you know multiple projects that Google goes to launch and then uh, either lets languish or, or falls apart. And that seems to be uh, what happened here. Stadia was supposed to give you the ability to uh, play games on uh, underpowered devices or any device for that matter, uh, your TV, your smartphone, your tablet, your Chromebook, uh, without needing a high powered console or computer. But you know, it worked, it worked well. They just didn't get the, the kind of 
groundswell support that you know larger names in the business have gotten being you know microsoft or or uh, sony now amazon on the flip side they continue to offer their luna cloud service it seems as though uh, they're in it for the long haul they're going to make this big big commitment to gaming and that's really the only thing you can do um you know some analysts i spoke to said this proves you can't just strong arm your way into uh, the gaming market uh, by flashing around a lot of money you have to be in it for the long haul and really build up that kind of goodwill and attention and you know i guarantee you asked you know a number of gamers they probably didn't know that stadia really existed it was only around for quite a, a short amount of time so you know it, it just seems as though google didn't have um you know the the either will or wherewithal when it comes to getting into the gaming industry like this. All right, we know you've got the pulse on gamers out there. Even got the poster to prove it, Dan, with the Super Nintendo controller. Love it, Ben. Great to have you here with us this morning. Thanks for breaking this down.